I saw the film in, in 2001 uh, in Dublin. Uh, there was a, a conference devoted to Philippe Garrel and, uh, and there was only about 12 people there at the time. I think it was uh, all 12 fans worldwide of, of Philippe Garrel. It was a film that I'd literally dreamed, you know, I dreamed it in my mind of what it would be because I'd read, you know, the various texts in French and, and the very few references in English to it. And I knew it was some kind of central film in his career for various reasons. And I, I just, I, I had a strong desire for it to be something great. And in fact, the film was, was infinitely greater than anything I had dreamed. It's one of his, his rawest movies at the level of its, its autobiographical content. All of Gabriel's films are somewhat autobiographical. What L'Enfant Secret really uh, zooms in on is on the one hand his relationship with Nico, the singer from the Velvet Underground days, and also his experience of getting electroshock treatment for, for sort of psychotic episodes that arose from, from drug addiction, from heroin addiction, that he, uh, that he shared with Nico. The secret child of the title is in fact the child that Nico had by Alain Delon uh, in real life. Like so much in the film, it's about the shock of like suddenly having an experience of of something other than yourself and something that is a total surprise and that you didn't count on but it's a real human person you've got to deal with you know this this surly little kid in the film is the secret child it really is a film that puts you right in the center of of, of the trauma of his life at that time Love for Secret is almost from scene to scene is based on these sorts of shocks or surprises or revelations. You never have the slightest idea where the film's going to go next and many scenes seem like a radical negation of the one that goes before in terms of its mood or its style or its content. Separation, like literally just having to say goodbye to someone, is like one of the absolutely central human moments for him. You observe, and I've never seen this conveyed in a film so well, when two people cannot say goodbye to each other, when they can't leave each other. You can scarcely see the two figures of the man and the woman. It's so dark and there's just like these little patches of light in the image. And this incredible music by Faton Cahen and Didier Lockwood plays. This scene is so incredible, you know, and uh, like so powerful, you know, I and, 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 and a number of people watching the film in Dublin that day were absolutely in tears. I think what, what Garel captures in, in his cinema, and particularly in L'Enfant Secret, is this really intense quality of intimacy. And I don't just mean intimacy with details of his life, you know, some of which he fictionalises, uh, adopts, adapts, even romanticises in some of his work. That's all fine. But what I mean is actually intimacy with the film itself, like almost the, the, the materiality, the materials of the film. Literally, the image, the grain of the image, uh, the edits, the black frames. I get almost a sense that you enter what's been called the, the unconscious of film. You know, that, that you enter this layer of, of film underneath the film, the, 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 the really the basic substratum of film, which, you know, would be its grain and its darkness and so on. There are moments in the film that are so simply technically done where he is refilming off a, off a, a moviola, like he has is presumably 35 or 16 more footage on a movie and he's, he's filming off that. So of course in any technical sense this is you know completely sort of dissipated disintegrating image um, but that's precisely what he uses. He kind of as the film progresses he plunges you more and more into this and on the one hand it's a reference to the unconscious 
On the other hand, there's a reference to like silent cinema, and there are many references to silent cinema in the film. And it's also almost like an archaic sort of experience of like the land of fairy tale. So this is part of the, the intense intimacy of, of the film. I mean, it's, it's interesting, he, he had so little money that he made this film with. He, he actually he put it in, in the lab like it was finished in 1979 and he didn't have the money to get it out of the lab for three years. 1982 was when it was first shown, but it was already three years old then. Uh, and so you, you have this sense, and I have this overpowering sense when I watch the film, that you're really watching a very precious film that could almost disintegrate before your eyes, uh, and, that, and it almost didn't exist in the world. And that Gorel is, is a survivor. He almost didn't exist uh, in the world, you know, through, through the various personal traumas he went through. The screenings were organised by Fergus Daly, an Irish filmmaker and film critic. And at the end of the movie, you know, it's one of those movies when the light goes up, that's like, what world am I in? You know, like, you, you cannot get back to the ordinary world after this movie. Uh, partly because it, it ends so intensely and so abruptly. There are no end credits. There's, there's nothing. Once the final shot, which is devastating, uh, is over, it just, you know, literally, the lights went on and, and you know, the curtain opened. And, uh, there, there was nothing at the end. This is how Gorel wanted it. And, and so suddenly, you know, we're, we're back in reality and I walked to the back of the cinema and, uh, and Fergus was standing at the back of the cinema and he was trembling. He was actually shaking a little bit. And, and I walked up to him and Fergus looked at me and he said, have we just seen the greatest film ever made? And I said, yes, we did. And I still believe this. <laughs>